Hey guys, it is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. This is a subscriber request. Uh, somebody wanted me to create something similar to this little Ponyomi's rainbow. So, so as you can see, you get this really interesting psychedelic rainbow color and it kind of reminds me of Sailor Moon. So I wanted to use that as an inspiration. I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, but uh, before we even had HD, we had this show called Sailor Moon and there was this transformation where she had this rainbow color in here and then she uh, would twirl around and get this pretty thing going on and I was a big fan of it when, way back in the day. So I wanted to do something similar. So this is Calico. You guys can download this at academicphoenixplus.com. Feel free to do so. But uh, I wanted to kind of mimic that. So this is what it's going to be about. We are going to create our own shader that is going to have a little bit of a tune, which is going to have a little bit of an outline plus the rainbows. So let's get started. The first thing I'd like to do, though, is go into texturing. This is a workspace. You guys can follow along at a tutorial in the previous tutorial when we go over workspaces and create your own. So I have my little character here and if I kind of scroll through, she is in a turntable. And I want to create my own shader. So if I go over here and create a new tab, I can uh, just have it called Untitled 2. That's fine. Hit tab to create a new node. And let's go ahead and do an AI standard. Standard surface. So now we have an AI standard surface. I'm going to call it Rainbow just because I like to keep everything organized and I'm going to go ahead and assign it to her body. We can just kind of keep the rest just to see what that looks like. So right now it's just a typical AI standard surface shader. So what I really want to do is scroll out here for a second and we want to use a node. We're going to start with the rainbow. So let's go ahead and create an AI noise. So let's go ahead and hit that tab key and then go type in AI noise. AI stands for Arnold and let's bring up its nose shader. So, so far so good. Let's grab that out color and drag it into the base color or you can always just select the shader here and just middle mouse and drag the AI noise into the color. It's going to give you the same effect. And then let's go ahead and bring this to the right so that it is at 100%. Looking at AI noise and pressing play, nothing major has happened other than a little bit of that uh, color change. And if I click on this guy right here, it's isolate. So whatever this node is happening, I can see a little bit clearer what's happening without any shadows uh, information. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit more let's crank it up to around five so we can see more of that noise. We can always calm it down later. And then what we can also do is instead of using scalar, we're going to use vector. And right off the bat, we get a rainbow. I'm going to zoom in so we can get a little bit of a closer look. So because of the nature of this texture, um, we have several colors that we can play with. If you want it to be a little bit calmer, you can just change it back to octave one. But if you bring up and have a little bit more noise, you're going to notice that as the higher the octave, the more noise and the clearer the render looks like, which is kind of nice. I'm going to kind of reduce it a little bit just so we can maybe up to two just to get a little bit more of that blurb. And it's really up to you what else you want to do with this. You can always increase the scale five by five by five. So as you can see, it looks kind of crazy. Or you can uh, increase it by uh, decrease it by 0.5 if you like. Or if you want to stretch it out, you can always do, let's say we want to stretch it out five and then you get some cool looking lines. So I'm going to keep it like that. And as you can see, if I click on the shader or maybe even turn this off, you can see how it looks like with the shader. Now, the issue, though, is that we really don't want it to have we want it to be flat. According to Sailor Moon, uh, it's pretty flat. So to make it look like it's flat so it doesn't look like it's got any highlight or shadow information, what we want to do is attach it to the emission. So let's grab that out color over here and drag it into emission. I think this may not show up very much right now. Render go to update full scene or you can do control U for the shortcut. And over here, the attributes, let's go ahead and open up emission, which is right here, and then crank it up to one. Let's press play. And now we have a really wild looking psychedelic object. So again, if you want it to look more like earlier, I can just change this back to 0.5. So now we have a, a much interesting looking shader. Cool. She still has some highlight information. So if you don't want those highlights over here in the corners, I can always just go and decrease the weight of the highlights or the specularity by zero. And now it's nice and flat. All right, so far so good. Let's assign it to the rest of it, but not to the eyes because we really want to be able to see the eyes. So I'm going to zoom over here, select everything and deselect the eyes if I can. And let's go ahead and I reassign, right click, assign existing material. Where is my rainbow? Rainbow. 
There she is. Cool. Then I'm going to select my eyes and I'm going to do the same thing because the shadow information is starting to take over too much. So I'm going to look for that AI standard uh, surface and let's go ahead and go to our emission and crank up that value. Now it's too much. So we are going to need to connect the color to the shader. So let's uh, take a look at the eyes. I'm going to go over here. I have the eyeball selected. I'm going to click on this guy, which is going to reveal the shader. Zoom in. And let's grab that out color and attach it to the emission. So let me middle mouse and drag this to the color. All right, there it goes. And then I can increase it. There we go. So now we're getting that. At least we don't lose the eyes. So we're having a really nice effect right now. It's kind of cute. Uh, she's got a lot of color going on right now. And it's pretty wild. Cool. Looks good. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is how do we create that tune shader? Well, we're going to have to combine two shaders so that we can get that outline. So let's go ahead and hit tap again and do an AI mix. There it is. And uh, this is the Arnold mix shader. Love using this one. Let's zoom out a little bit. Cool. And then we're also going to create another AI standard. All right, there we go. I'm going to call this one black black outline just so I can keep things organized. I have a bunch of shaders and I just want to make sure I don't get confused. All right, so let's make this black and let's crank this up to one. And I probably do not need any specularity, so turning that off as well. All right, let's grab the out color, connect it here. Let's grab the out color for the black outline, connect it in shader two. So when I look at shader one, it's got the eye. Oops, does that say eye? Boy, that's a mistake. Let's get rid of that connection. And I'm going to select this shader, go back to number two, select shift select this one and then click on that guy. There we go. Uh, this one just reveals all of them. All right, here's my mix shader. I'm going to grab the out color for this one and then drag it into shader one and then assign this into my object. So select all of this, not that. And let's deselect the eyeballs. Right click, assign existing material and then look for that AI mix shader. All right. So what we have right now is a mix of the rainbow with my uh, the black one. So if I grab the mix shader and I go all the way to the left, I'm going to get that rainbow. And if I scroll all the way to the right, I'm going to get black. So I have to drive this black one with a uh, something that's going to give me an outline. So we are going to be using a new node, which I don't think I've ever talked about before. So this is kind of fancy. We're going to use what's called the facing ratio. So let's hit tab again and let's use AI facing. If you start typing in facing, uh, you're going to get the facing ratio. And this little node, it's pretty interesting. What it does, it looks at the camera and then does a gradient from whatever's closest to the camera back. And we can use this to drive the outline. So what I'm going to do is take this AI facing ratio, which is a black and white image. Please note that there is no SG node, which means that it can't be rendered on its own. Uh, we're going to drag this into the mix and immediately you can see a cool effect, which is the black is in the center. And as it gets further away from the camera, it starts to fade into the rainbow. This is the opposite of what we want it to do. So we're going to go over here to our AI facing ratio and invert. And now we have kind of like an effect. It's a little hard to see, but there is a little bit of a black outline on the edges, but we want to clean this up. Click on this guy right here just to see the effect. I have this node selected. If it's getting a little busy, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay. All right, here's my AI facing ratio and I can kind of mess around with this. So if we're going to move this to the left, for example, and you'll notice that it starts going, it starts to take over the edges. You see how it's uh, black around here. And as it gets further away, it starts turning white. It's kind of nice. So if I go in here, I'm getting that effect. So let's bring this back. So notice that if you want something that has a really thick outline, this is a really great way of doing it. It's a little faded. It does have um, a little bit of an effect around the edges. So it does give you a gradient, but it's outlining things really nicely. This is one way of doing tune shading, by the way, just in case if you're interested. But let's grab this and see what the bias does. The bias is going to make that edge even sharper. You start losing it. Okay, so keep that in mind. You do start losing that edge. However, uh, you can also increase it. So then you have this really dramatic shadow. So I'm going to take this and just kind of bring it to the right. 
until I get a little bit of a cleaner outline. And I serious, I don't really need too many other outlines. I just need to kind of make sure that my character, maybe mess this up a little bit more. I might want to bring this in a little bit, just kind of mess around. It's up to you how much of an effect you want. So you can have some really cool effects on this. Let's bring this in. And if it's getting hard to see, I usually click on this just so I can get a better idea. Really want that solidness to be in the on the back here, but maybe bring this out just a little bit. So I'm trying to get that nice outline. All right, let's see what that looks like. Turn this off. Render update full scene just because I'm worried that and getting really close. Just kind of mess around with those attributes. Cool. So there we have it. We have a quick little render on how to create an outline. Uh, we have kind of like a, our own. We made our own tune shading. It can be revolved. It's got a little bit of an outline. There's some areas that I can increase the weight, but right now I'm actually very happy. If you guys wanted to, you can create separate shaders for the face, the head, and all that stuff so you can get a different outline. But hopefully you guys, that will kind of help you uh, kind of recreate this Sailor Moon look. Now, the next question that I'm going to get is how to make this actually animate. So we're going to go back to our rainbow texture here, and let's go to the AI noise. And if I do a control and I click on these values, middle mouse and drag, I'm going to get a little bit of that animated rainbow look which is really fun. So I'm going to animate this. So I'm going to call this the uh, plus side of Academic Phoenix Plus. This kind of shows you how to create the shader network that we used. We used an AI mix shader. We have an AI facing ratio to drive the two shaders. We have the black outline and then we have the rainbow standard. And then we have an AI noise that drives it as well. Um, by the way, you guys are more than welcome to change these colors to something red, for example, if you wanted to or other colors, so you're not stuck with black. Black is kind of like the default for Sailor Moon, but just letting you know that there is other options as well. Okay, got distracted, let's go back to this. Um, all right, how to animate this? So let's grab AI Noise, and I'm gonna keyframe this puppy. So over here to the right, I'm gonna right click on my offset on my noise and say set keyframe. And then I'm gonna scroll over here all the way, I think this is the 180. I'm gonna control, right click, and just kind of give this a crazy, amount and then right click set key again this is where the timeline is and then i can watch it i can kind of get a general idea of how the animation is moving if it's not moving fast enough for my needs you can always go and click here go to 180 and you can always manually change the so for example let's do 50. So now when I this thing scrolls around, I should be able to see a nice change. Notice how the hair is changing. It's probably very dramatic. But uh, there you go. That is a quick way, sort of quick way, of creating your own standard. Let me just go back to my classic. Bring this back out. I'm going to render this out so you guys can uh, kind of take a look at what this looks like in its full glory. Um, there is shadow information. I probably do not need the dome. So because this is driven by something else. So if you want to, you can always just break the connection and uh, maybe notice that she does produce light. So just keep that in mind. But um, you can change this to white, for example, if it lets me, if it lets me, there we go. Well, boy, she's super bright now. So you might want to calm that light down. Maybe the intensity is too strong. There we go. So she does uh, get an outline. She does have all of these really cool stuff. And now her textures actually animate. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out um, so we can see it in its full glory. And I will be right back. OK, here we are in After Effects. Let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to hit spacebar. And there she is. Rainbow magic power. Cool. It's a little fast. You guys can always change it at the noise offset and just kind of reduce the intensity of it if you like. Otherwise, here it is. She's uh, fully textured. We created a pretty complex shader. So hopefully that was helpful. You guys found it interesting. And uh, yeah, please, uh, if you have any comments, please share below. And also, if you found this helpful and useful, please like and share with others just like you who might want to try something fun with uh, Arnold's shaders. Also, don't forget to check, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where I uh, you can sign up for my newsletter and get some free ebooks and 
free videos, other fun things. So thanks again, everybody, for your support and listening. And I will see you next time.